You know, there's often a lot of attention and money to be gained by presenting an easy answer to a complicated question. How can I better myself in the future? Just read your daily horoscope and you'll know everything you need. How do I stop getting sick? Just buy our totally legit supplement that'll totally fix everything. Doctors hate us. Why do I have less disposable income? Well, it's all current president's fault, and if you vote for me, the economy will totally boom again. On a completely unrelated note, a lot of movies and shows are sucking lately, and people are blaming wokeness as the root of the issue. If you've spent some time on pop culture discussion spaces online, you know about the takes I'm talking about. Wokeness killed movies, TV, video games, and my beta fish, everything's turned into propaganda. Companies like Disney care more about pushing a political agenda than telling good stories, etc. These ideas are, of course, ridiculous. If you need more than one sentence to convince you of that, consider watching my last video, but in short, there's no real correlation between progressive tendencies and poor quality, and a few lady superheroes and gay background characters simply do not have the power to send Disney's stock plummeting to the ground. But if that's the case, how is there such a large cohort of people decrying woke identity politics as the root of all of this failure? Does it all trace back to bigotry? Well, yeah, that's at least a big part of the picture. The common denominator between all of these anti-woke punching bags is that they have women and minorities in major positive roles. Diverse media can sometimes avoid this kind of backlash if it's truly excellent, but it's not just about quality, either. Bad works starring straight white guys rarely see such widespread and sustained mockery. It's that combination of diversity and poor quality that leads to the internet hate train, and that means opposition to diversity is a major part of the picture. Look at the live-action Disney remakes. They're all lazy, and they all saw plenty of criticism on film Twitter and YouTube, but it wasn't until the Little Mermaid remake starring a black woman that we saw such massive review bombing and outcry that Disney is over. At the same time though, I don't mean to say anyone who criticizes the new Little Mermaid or She-Hulk or Rings of Power, even those who criticize it for being woke, is motivated to do so because they hate women or anything like that. Even if they are feeding into a race or gender charged backlash, on a personal level, a lot of them are just disillusioned with the state of modern entertainment and are simply misinformed about what's wrong with it. And the current anti-woke ecosystem on YouTube has practically perfected the art of giving people the wrong answers. With that, let's talk about media literacy. I can't really explain this topic without the risk of sounding pretentious, but I do think it's critical to the conversation. For the purpose of this video, I'll define media literacy as the ability to understand and explain why people interpret media the way they do. Like, anyone could tell you Jaws is a good movie with a big shark, but it takes some insight to realize the movie's real thrill comes from the shark not being on screen for most of the runtime. I won't argue media literacy is a particularly difficult skill to learn, but it is a skill like any other. By default, without formal or informal training, most people are not great at it. These anti-woke YouTube channels, you know the ones, prey on people with low media literacy. They present a work that most of their audience already dislikes, but haven't examined deeply enough to figure out why. From there, these YouTubers place the blame largely, or even entirely, on political messaging. For the reasons I've laid out in my last video, this is 99% unfair nonsense, and it should be obvious that these people are just making up reasons to complain about diversity. That said, there are ways to have it make sense to undiscerning eyes and ears. One of them is exaggerating the importance of minor details. If these people catch any glimpse of a gay kiss or pride flag or mention of pronouns or racism or anything like that, you better believe they're gonna milk that shit dry. They'll shove it in the thumbnail, claim it interferes with the story, claim this is all modern creators care about, and overall make a far bigger deal about it than anything else in the work. The same goes for behind the scenes and promotional stuff. One of the actors in a movie mentions diversity, bam, that means the work is going to be nothing but a preachy seminar, and its image is immediately tainted in the minds of these people's viewers. Many of those viewers probably won't even see the film, leaving that woke caricature as its only mental image. Another tactic that's common on channels like these is the very targeted use of loaded buzzwords like agendas and pandering that make very normal things sound threatening and undesirable. These words have negative connotations, but the basic things they're referring to, being the state of having a specific goal and appealing to a specific audience, aren't bad in and of themselves. It's clear that even the anti-woke crowd can appreciate those things. 
Look at Top Gun Maverick. It's often seen as a light in the dark of so-called woke Hollywood, and I agree that it's refreshingly free of many common issues with current filmmaking. But I also can't think of a recent blockbuster with a more obvious political goal. The thing was literally funded by the US military as a recruiting effort, and it's also a shameless machismo power fantasy. But you only hear accusations of agenda pushing when it's a left-leaning agenda, and you only hear accusations of pandering in works made to appeal to women and minorities. In a lot of these videos, those words are used with no elaboration, and in many cases they can't elaborate, because to do so would be to reveal their incredible hypocrisy. But it turns out, when you're talking to people who both don't like a given piece of media and are opposed to the concept of wokeness, you don't have to give substantive criticism. You can just spout a handful of scare words, and that'll convince your audience that those two things are somehow connected. I want to dive a little deeper into one of those buzzwords, and what's become the critical drinker's main catchphrase. The message. He's brought it up in many a video with that big ominous echo, and it's been picked up by a lot of other people in his ecosystem. Despite all of this, I've never seen an explanation of what the message actually is. From what I can tell, not even his fans can come up with a real definition, and this is very telling. Maybe there is some kind of elaboration buried in one of the drinker's videos, but regardless, the term still manages to operate without many people knowing the definition. In fact, it's probably impossible to make a definition, at least one that's anywhere close to consistent. It's inherently vague and means whatever the viewer wants it to mean. Well, maybe not. It might be a little more specific than that. Using these broad snarl words like woke, identity politics, and the message to complain about media is, if you ask me, a very specific form of the Mott and Bailey fallacy in action. For those unfamiliar, this is the phenomenon of someone essentially switching between two positions out of convenience. It takes its name from a type of castle with two parts, the Bailey, where people live day to day but is hard to defend, and the Mott, which is small and uncomfortable but you can retreat to when under attack. In rhetoric, the Bailey is an extreme position that one operates on by default, while the Mott is a more moderate position they can claim they've always held, even if they really haven't. In this instance, the Mott and Bailey applies to what the message is. If you really pressed one of these people and asked them to define the message, they'd probably give you a straw caricature of what progressive creators believe, like all white men are evil, or we want to turn your kids gay, or entertainment should exist solely as a commentary on modern day politics. You'll sometimes see assertions like this in really broad anti-woke videos that don't have to zero in on the details. This is the mod. Arguing against this message is defensible in a vacuum, but the position you're opposing doesn't really exist. When you look at what the message actually is, as portrayed in the media they're talking about, it constitutes such radical takes as women can be heroes, so can people of color, gay people exist, and fascism is bad. This is the Bailey. Opposition to those messages is what these people are actually spreading. The fact that both this and this can both be labeled using the nebulous term the message makes it even easier to protect plausible deniability. You don't even need to change your wording if a single phrase can mean both things. It also puts the anti-woke crowd under a big tent where the hardline bigots, the Frankfurt School conspiracy theorists, and the media illiterate enablers can talk to each other while thinking they all have the same beliefs. This idea of plausible deniability even extends within the mind of those who make these claims. The modern Bailey fallacy can be an effective way to dispel cognitive dissonance for those who try to deny their own prejudice. People can tell themselves this exists when they're really only looking at this. All you need to do is not actually read into what you're watching. Experiences can vary, but in conclusion, if a creator can agree with their viewer on which works are bad, and point to wokeness as the common problem with those works, that can lead those viewers, at least those with low media literacy and maybe some unconscious bias, to see wokeness in media as an inherent negative. The more content they see promoting this idea, the more these biases can be reinforced. For the true terminally online nerds for whom liking Star Wars or whatever is a core part of their identity, this can conceivably lead to a more general opposition to social justice in any form. And this is one way right-wing radicalization can happen. It's certainly not lost on me that this phenomenon extends far beyond just the pop culture conversation. There's a lot you can talk about when it comes to scapegoating various people, ideas, and groups in wider political discourse. And those who fall for anti-woke YouTube rage bait are likely primed for that kind of thing. By now, we're starting to move beyond the scope of this video, so I'll end with this. 
In this day and age, bigotry is mostly insidious. Few people are intentionally racist or sexist, few want to be considered as such, and even fewer will outright label themselves as such. Yet minorities and women are still treated unequally in many ways, and the massive dogpiling on those who appear in less than perfect entertainment is just one symptom. While this paradigm may temper some of bigotry's worst excesses, it also makes it harder to spot, including within oneself. People will eat up mental shortcuts that prevent them from confronting unsavory aspects of their worldview, including that the way they perceive and talk about media might be unfair to those different from themselves. Ultimately though, that worldview can change for the better, and the way to do so is through knowledge, empathy, and communication. Let it be known the actual impact of a character getting race-swapped, a few lines of dialogue addressing a modern political issue, a cringy comment from a remake actor making fun of the original, anything like that. These things will not ruin your entertainment, much less anything bigger. Learning this may be difficult, in multiple ways, but in the end, it does make the world better for everyone. Also, watch Blue Eye Samurai, holy shit, you cannot tell me race and gender issues do not belong in action-adventure media when that show exists. Anyway, yeah, thanks for getting through this video. Like, subscribe, share, any of those are very much appreciated. For those curious, I do not plan on making any other videos this politically charged, at least for a while. I've just been noticing this phenomenon, thinking about it a lot, and decided it would be worth making a couple videos essentially saying, hey. Cut this shit out. And thank god I do not have to watch any of these chuds again and can go back to having fun now. Bye!